chords and coffee. The other day, Marla, there's Spencer, there's Josh, there's Jared sneaking up back there. You gotta watch old Jared. Look at, <laughs> Look at these wonderful folks right here. Marla was doing a demo on chords and coffee. No, we're not even chords and coffee. You're just doing a demo. Stay tuned. She's got a cool demo coming up. Marla doesn't use a pick. Not everybody uses a pick. I use a pick, but I use my fingers a lot too. And this episode is going to be about, how are we doing you on chords and coffee? This episode is gonna be about using different right hand techniques. We neglect our right hand a lot of times on this show because we're always talking about chords which involve your left hand. But today, we're gonna do some really cool right hand techniques to kind of make your playing a little more interesting and spice things up. I'm gonna be using the Gristle Master from Reverend. Amber's gonna be drinking from the uh, Seafoam Green Cup. <laughs> and away we go. What kind of pick do you use? It's important because the kind of pick you use, depending on what kind of pick it is, may offer some really cool, expressive tools in of itself. But your fingers have really good tone. Were you here for the Jeff Beck episode? Did you see that one? Jeff Beck doesn't use pick. Jeff Beck has amazing tone. I'm not saying throw away your pick, but I am saying there may be some options literally right at your fingertips for different tonal flavors. And one, two, three, here we go. Boom. The Reverend Gristle Master. Are you familiar with Mr. Gregory Cockery? Greg Cock, K-O-C-H. Probably one of the best guitar players online as far as demos in my opinion. He is my spirit animal. I love Greg Cock. If you're watching this, I think you're amazing. Speaking of amazing, look at that. <sighs> Makes your coffee taste better. You want one of those? Leave a comment. I'll tell you how. All right. So let's get started. You know the uh, the bluesy John Mayer, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of. Let me get my phone right so you can see my hands here. That little bluesy sweep rake. I'm going to be showing you that along with a few other things. Uh, first things first. Let's just play like let's do this in C minor. And if we're playing just a C minor chord, so index finger across the eighth fret from low E to high E, and then um, my ring finger and pinky finger are on the 10th fret of the A string and the D string. So first things first, if we're just playing out of this chord, listen to just the difference. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it as well through this phone, but that's what the point of the pick. This is with the shoulder. Listen to it when I play it single notes. So this is with the point. Wait. This is with the shoulder. And if I can play the same thing twice, it'll be a miracle for all of us. But anyway, I'll keep trying. So. What you're not seeing is on my right hand, my fingers so desperately want to get involved because I've just conditioned myself, but just try that right there. So here's this lick really quick. I'm on the uh, uh, eighth fret of the D string to the 10th fret of the D, and then eighth fret of the G. Wait. So uh, 10th fret of the G. So um, eight, 10 on the, on the D, and then 10th fret of the G. And I'm bending it slightly. Eighth fret of the G, back to the tenth fret of the D. We'll go with that. Do that with the point of the pick, and then do that with the shoulder of the pick. Try that, and especially there was a great uh, Uncle Larry episode on Tom Bukovac's homeschooling YouTube channel where he had Guthrie Trap on there, and he was talking about how playing acoustic. 
a lot of times the bluegrassy guys, you ever seen a, like a guy that's like a dyed in the wool or a gal bluegrass player? A lot of times their picks don't have like a, a pointy end to it. This is an Ultex 1.14, by the way. A lot of times their picks are almost like round all the way around. They like that, they like that shoulder sound. And Uncle Larry was, was commenting how Guthrie Trap was using that, that uh, shoulder sound on his acoustic. Well, you can hear a little bit of it as well on the electric. But I would encourage you, just try that. Just move the old pick around and listen to the way it sounds. There is a different tone. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is more of a um, funky immediacy of the, of the point of the pick versus the roundness of the, the, the round side of the pick. That's the first thing to try out. Move your pick around, right? And uh, Otis Gibbs, you ever listen to Otis Gibbs? You know who Otis Gibbs is, you ought to check him out if you know. It's a fantastic YouTube channel with just story after story. Not all of them appropriate content for all ages, fair warning there. But there is uh, tons of stories about musicians. And Tom Bukovac was just on there talking about playing with Joe Walsh and how Joe Walsh used the old Herco pick. Also The Edge from U2 I think uses that, um, is it the Darylin? Um, somebody put on here what the edge uses so that we can all know what that is. But he uses a specific pick that's got these little grippy things on there. And he uses those grippy parts when he's doing that, you know, kind of that kind of stuff, right? Okay. So use different parts of the pick. Try different picks. The point of the pick, the round of the pick. Also, speaking of Jeff Beck earlier, a lot of times Jeff Beck would use sort of if you were to hold your hand as if you were holding a pick, right? Sort of in between here, like so. He would use kind of the back part of the nail here. You know, I'm not holding a pick, I'm just, I'm just basically picking with, there's the sound of my pick falling to the floor to further emphasize the fact that I'm not holding a pick. I'm just using my finger. I mean, I don't know about you, but I can really, really tell the difference between that pick It's just a much softer sound. Does it hurt my finger? Well, yes, it does. However, if I did it all the time, I get used to it. That's what Marla does. We just saw her in this demo coming up. You'll, you'll see that that's the way she does all of her stuff. With that same breath, have you ever tried using your fingers. I love using my pick and my fingers simultaneously. Okay, so just fingers here, listen to this. Versus. I just had a thought pop in my head. Some of y'all are still working on getting this lick. Let me give it to you one more time. On the D string, eight, 10, and then on the G string, I'm bending from the 10th fret, probably not quite up to the 12th fret, but sort of a half step bend. And then back to the eighth fret on the G. And then 10, eight, 10. I just picked that lick at random because I wanted to have something to demonstrate just some of the different sounds with the pick. So back to this right hand, try using your, so pick, pick, and then pluck with your middle finger. This picking and plucking thing, this is, this is where I live. This is my favorite uh, because I feel like there is an EQ on the meatiness of the finger that is, um, it's different enough from the pick that just in of itself, if you can incorporate that into just your regular playing, it, it creates interest in your phrasing. Um, there is a physicality that might, um, if you're Shreddy McShredderton and you're doing like lots of sweep stuff, probably slow you down, honestly. But I, I, don't, I don't do a whole lot of that. And 
I think it's cool, but for me personally, it's not where my interest in expression lies. And so I like the sound of being able to alternate between these two things, okay? So to that end, so I'm going, and then plucking, and then picking. So I'm kind of plucking the G string and picking the D string. Now, with that same thing, there is, a, and this is kind of a country thing too. This little uh, kind of banjo roll sort of pluck. And what you have here is a down, down, pluck. Down, down, pluck. Down, down, pluck. Down, down, pluck. Down, down, pluck, right? So I want to show you this little exercise that I invented for that. <laughs> Show you the whole thing here in a second but i'm going to get you started on this I, I really did not pick a good camera angle so bear with me <laughs> okay so we're going to be making a b chord and we're going to have ring finger on the ninth fret of the d and we're going to have middle finger on the eighth fret of the g and so you're going to play pluck or pick pick in the right hand on the d and the g pick pick you with me so middle, a ring finger on the ninth fret of the D, middle finger on the eighth fret of the G, and an open B string. So pick, pick, pluck on the B string. Pick, pick, pluck. Pick, pick, pluck. Is it a down and up? No, it is a down, down, pluck. This comes from like a banjo roll. Kind of thing. Pick, pick, pluck. Pick, pick, pluck. Pick, pick, pluck. I did it wrong just a second ago if you're really watching close. Pick, pick, pluck. There it is, right. Pick, pick, pluck. It's technically a sweep because you're going down, down, and then plucking with your middle finger. You can use another finger, but man, your middle finger is just right there sticking out above everybody. You seen that guy talking about the way your fingers are that has to do with whether or not you're going to be successful in life? Have you seen that meme? Anyway... A lot of weird information out there, folks. Anyway, moving on. So, pick, pick, pluck. And what we're going to do for right now is we're going to go. The magic starts to happen when you get those two pick picks running together fast where it's like. feeling tension in your right hand like in your wrist just stop you don't don't keep doing something till it hurts and then keep going this is not the navy seals okay this is folks drinking coffee and playing the guitar okay so <laughs> all right shape the second shape is you're going to take your index finger and you're going to move it down to the seventh fret of the D making a B7 so now here comes the big payoff now so from this shape so index finger is currently on the seventh fret of the D and the middle finger is on the eighth fret of the G, you're going to move your index finger down to the sixth fret of the D, and then your pinky is going to land on the ninth fret of the G. So from this to that, so. It kind of sounds classical, right? Somewhere where telecasters and banjos and classical music meet, you have found chords and coffee. So to that end, here it is. And so for that one, all this is gonna, you're going to do is, is have your index finger from the D go back to the fifth fret of the D. So 
you're making an E minor. So you've got B, B7, E major, E minor, right? So one dominant seven, then to four, and then to the minor four. We just did an episode not too long ago on one to four. So here we are again. Comes up a lot, turns out. So, and by the way, this entire activity is still in the right hand. Down, down, pluck on the D string, on the G string with the down, down pick, and then pluck. And then from there, it does this thing. all of that, those chord shapes, send me an email, Nate White, N-A-T-E-W-H-I-T-E, at palinmusic.com, and I will write all those chords out for you and send it to you. But the whole thing is down, down, pluck. And it's, it's a banjo roll, but it's also the kind of thing that if you can do that and sustain that in your right hand for the entirety of that exercise, you become a very dangerous person, in the words of Mick, Rocky Balboa's trainer, because you're building up endurance to be able to... Because that little exercise is more than just that. It, it's really a motion for... Doing this small sweep into a note that you're plucking, which leads us to this kind of thing here. I would love to know. I mean, if anybody knows or has um, an idea, like the, the first player to really do that, it would have to be somebody that influenced Jimi Hendrix. Um, is it a Lightning Hopkins thing? Is it, um, is it a Muddy Waters thing? I don't know. I mean, somebody tell me. I'd be happy to, I'd be, I would love to know. And I'd be happy to share with everybody else what, what, you, what you know. Um, but this, this bluesy rake sweep right um let's do that let's talk about it so let's go back to the c minor so this is honestly pretty easy and you can do this and if you already do this great uh just throw up a thumbs up just to let me know that you're down with this already but here's what we're going to do i want you to think about a c minor shape sort of stairway to heaven minor chord where you've got I want you to see this shape. We're not actually going to do it, but we're going to kind of see this in our mind's eye while we're facilitating this motion. The shape we're seeing is this 8-8-8 eight, eight, eight on the high E, on the B, and on the G, down to the 10th fret of the D. And what I'm doing is, as I'm sweeping into it, I am, I am not quite laying my left hand down i'm kind of rotating into and really what i'm focused on is my ring finger on the 10th fret of the d i'm really, really focused on getting to that spot in fact that's kind of in my mind the target right but it works both ways i can start here and target this note in fact, you can pick any one of those notes. So here's me picking the D. Here's me picking the G. Here's me picking the B. Here's me picking the high E. And in each case, there's a combination of two things happening. I'm breaking through the strings to end on the target string, right? And I am dampening really with both hands. I'm dampening with my right hand kind of over the string to help facilitate. The I'm holding this awkwardly so you can see exactly what my right hand is doing. 
and I'm dampening with this hand with the notes that I'm not playing, but kind of just leaving my hand kind of close on there. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. The ergonomics of it are actually pretty simple. And what I would say is this, I feel like it's easier uh, coming down into this and then going up. Because if I'm going up, I am sort of, if you're gonna practice that slow, um, let's, let's, let's do it going up. Uh, D string, again, 10th fret, and then eight, eight, eight on the G, B, and the high E string. And practice laying your finger there, and shoot, let's just do the top three strings. Practice going through each one of these strings and then taking your finger off so that it kills the note, and the last thing you hear is just the room reverb, right? Now do it backwards. A little harder that way, but do it anyway. Now do it down to this D note on the 10th fret. Trust me, once you get that in your hands, it, I mean, honestly, it'll be with you for the rest of your life. And it's one of those things that it, there's so many things with playing guitar that just, they just take however much time they take, right? Sometimes, you know, and, and uh, so my son, my oldest son, takes saxophone lessons from a dear friend of mine named Jack. And my son's name is Jackson, no relation. But um, <laughs> Jack um, is such a great teacher and he's so patient. And my son, Jackson, has been taking lessons for long enough to where as a parent, and look, look what, look what I'm doing. We're doing, I mean, this is a lesson right here. But even as a parent, you know, you start to think, are we going somewhere with this? Is this working? Does he have it? Well, anybody can do this. This idea that somehow effortlessness equals talent or equals it's meant to be, that's hogwash. That's a fixed mindset. You need a growth mindset. You can do it. Even if it takes you 76 times or 176 times, okay. Come on now. We're building a lifelong skill, and I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 76. Learning how to do this. Just keep be patient with yourself, and you can do it. You can do it. Yes, you can't. Well, my hands hurt. Well, everybody's hands hurt. I don't care how old are you when you're doing this, okay? You can do it. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes the breakthrough doesn't happen until there's been something significant to break through. But I've started noticing, in fact, I got a, a text from uh, Jackson's band director the other day where she said, hey, he's been doing much better in class. And it was awesome. And it's amazing with a little bit of encouragement like that'll do for you. So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to encourage you. If you uh, really got a lot out of this, I would love, fill up the comments. Hey guys, the live comments that you leave mean the world to me. And every Saturday morning I'm up with you and I'm in the live chat commenting right along and I love interacting with you. But what really helps push these videos out there into the ether that is the internet is your comments that you leave after the video has been posted. And also when you watch this and you share it, you know, we're trying to grow this thing and it would help so much if you would go ahead, leave comments, hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't hit the subscribe button. That's a big deal to the powers at YouTube and so therefore it's a big deal to us. But what's an even bigger deal is that we get to have this every morning. We are building a really powerful community of guitar players who encourage one another. I wanna thank you for that and let's keep doing it. If you've got questions about more right-hand techniques like this, I'm here for it, I'm here to help. I'm here to answer those questions and I'm here to encourage you. We'll see you next week, 9 a.m. Saturday morning for another Chords and Coffee.